Thank you, Presiding Officer. To make it perfectly clear, I say that it is not acceptable to me if the outcome of our exit from the European Union means that we can no longer participate in the Erasmus Plus programme. Not my words, although they could have been, but those of Jackson Carlaw in 2018. And in January last year, the Prime Minister said at Prime Minister's question time in the Parliament, there is no threat to the Erasmus scheme. So why does this betrayal matter? Established in 1987 under the stewardship of Dr Winnie Ewing when she chaired the European Parliament's Education and Culture Committee, it established primarily for higher education students at that time the programme. Erasmus Plus is now so much more. It helps further education, apprentices, youth groups, lifelong learners and educators take part in participation across Europe. On the radio this morning, Alistair Jack indicated that it was too expensive and it was elitist. But the words of the convener of our European and Culture Committee have shown us that our own Parliament's investigation into Erasmus highlights its benefits. Indeed, the European Commission 2019 impact study of the Erasmus programme highlights this too. States Erasmus and strategic partnerships facilitate social inclusion and reinforce democratic values. Three in five projects are considered to have contributed to enhancing social inclusion and non-discrimination in higher education. And 56% of participating organisations state that the strategic partnerships reinforce democratic values and the civic role of universities in their countries. It goes on to talk about how important Erasmus is to the competencies of employment and social cohesion. It states that yet participants find it much easier to get jobs. One in four Erasmus students go on to, to train abroad follow, following participation in the scheme. It has, no, sorry, I don't have enough time. The mobility of academics it improves teaching, learning practices, staff skills and competencies. And for our education establishments, it highlighted that projects boost digitalisation and innovative pedagogies, how important at the time of a pandemic. It also enhances and strengthens innovation and entrepreneurship. All of these tangible benefits thrown away under the Tory Brexit bus, along with their extra monies for the NHS. But not so for Ireland. That small independent nation of the European Union will extend to Northern Ireland the benefits of Erasmus Plus, even after Brexit. The country's Minister for Higher Education, Simon Harris, said, it's not a cost, it's an investment. How very different it could have been for Scotland if our young people and the pleas had, had, for a differentiated settlement had not fallen on Westminster Tory debt ears. Mr Jack says too expensive, I say an investment in our young people. And Ireland demonstrating values that reflect why the United Nations rank Ireland first for quality of life, while the UK languishes far, far behind many European neighbours. What a beacon of hope it would be for an independent Scotland. We have a taunts this afternoon in this chamber about whether this is a deal or no deal. Unfortunately for the Conservatives, the whole country knows that it's not deal or no deal. It's a game of jeopardy that they are complicit in, jeopardising the life chances of our young people, apprentices and youth groups, jeopardising 33 years of relationship building between Scotland's universities and the academia of our European neighbours, jeopardising the opportunities for collaboration and innovation, jeopardising social and cultural integration across Europe and jeopardising the very recognition of professional qualifications across Europe in the middle of a pandemic. Boris Johnson promised a sea of opportunity for our fishing. He promised Erasmus Plus would be sa safe and he also promised a bonfire of red tape. The only bonfire we have is that of broken Brexit promises, presiding officer, which I fear will be burning for a very long time.